This video will review the Excel skills you need to complete case number 9. The topic is regression analysis. This is a statistical tool that is very helpful in forecasting and predicting what might happen in the future. The tool that you need is located in the data ribbon in a group called data analysis. You may not have data analysis in your data ribbon, so you have to add it in. To do so, click File, Options, Add-ins, select Analysis Tool Pack, which in your case will be in this middle group, click Go, and then make sure there's a check mark next to Analysis Tool Pack, click OK, and now the data analysis option will be in your analyze group on the data ribbon. So when you click on data analysis and then you can select regression and click OK and all you have to do is fill in the dialog box. So regression is not a formula and it's not a function. It's a box that you fill in a lot like solver. But what you need to understand when you do regression analysis is what is X and what is Y. And it's important that you don't mix it up. X and Y both have to be numbers. No text, no column headings, just numbers and it has to be a matching set of numbers so the same number of rows. X is what you know and Y is what you're trying to find out or what you're trying to forecast or predict. So in this example X is what you know the consumer price index and Y is what you're trying to predict. So we're going to try to predict the 2020 average GTA house price based on what's happened in the past. So the X range will be all the CPIs all the way to 2019, not to 2020. And then the Y is a matching set of numbers that goes up to 2019. So if your ranges are not matching, you will get an error. And really that's all you have to do. Your output options will automatically go on a new worksheet or you can force the results to go on the same worksheet by selecting a blank area of your worksheet like cell E9. So now we just simply have to understand the results and what do they mean. Well, R squared and multiple R are measures of how strong the linear relationship is between the CPI and the average house price. It can go as high as plus one or 100% or as low as minus one. And anything close to zero means that there's no relationship between the two sets of numbers. They're entirely random. In this case, an R squared of 0.9 is extremely high, so it's a very tight connection between the inflation rate and the house prices. So that's the first number that we look at when we do a regression analysis because if it's very close to zero we have to stop there we cannot continue we cannot use regression analysis as a way of predicting what might happen in the future now the other two values we're going to look at are the intercept and the x variable coefficients because in order to predict we have to use the equation of a straight line which is y equals a plus bx. y is what we're trying to predict, x is what we know, and a and b come from regression analysis. So this is a, the coefficient in cell F25, that's a, and b is the x variable, 
right? It's next to the x. If we know a and we know b and we know x, we can predict what y or calculate what y will be. So going down to cell C30, we're going to enter a simple formula. Equals A, which is the intercept in F25, plus B, which is the X variable in F26, times X. The X in this case will be the predicted consumer price index for 2020. And when we enter that, we get a predicted value for the GTA average house price for the year 2020. Now what we're going to do next is to create an XY scatter chart to represent the results in graphical form. An XY scatter chart is different from a line chart because it allows you to manually select what X is and X is the horizontal axis on a chart. So you always begin by selecting X first and then you hold down the control key at the keyboard and select a matching set of Y values. So X and Y both have to be values or numbers and then from the insert ribbon in the charts group you will select the scatter XY and unconnected dots just the first option here and you can already see the relationship between X and Y it looks like a very straight line here but before we draw the trend line we're going to add the titles because it's important to know what these numbers are, especially along the bottom. So we have to label that as CPI. And over here, that would be house price. And the last thing we'll do here is add what's called the trend line. The trend line is a straight line that best fits the data points. The trend line is a regression line that comes from a linear regression analysis. And you can see how the data points are so very, very close to that straight line, indicating that R squared is very, very close to plus one. There is another command inside of Excel, rather new command that was created in Excel uh, 2016 called Forecast Sheet, which works very, very well with data related to time. So let me show you how to use that command. And I'll move over to the next worksheet. So you can see that our data set, our database table, has dates in it. In this case, monthly data. And so if we want to predict what's going to happen to city house prices in the future by using the data from the past, all we have to do is click inside of our database table that includes dates. And then from the data ribbon, we're going to click on this icon called Forecast Sheet. Again, let me repeat, if this is not available in versions of Excel older than 2016. So we simply click on Forecast Sheet and we immediately get a chart uh, that's date related and the blue line shows what actually happened. The up and down in this chart indicates that there's some monthly seasonality in the data and what Excel is doing is predicting what's going to happen in the future with upper and lower limits. And it's all based on what's happened in the past. So you can change the end date on your forecast. In this case, it goes out to 2023. You don't have to have it go out that far if that's not what you want. So you, let's say we can have it go to the end of 2021, see December 31st and click Create. And what happens is Excel inserts a new worksheet 
in this case called sheet one it gives you the graph and then if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see the actual prediction in in numbers the uh, average or most likely prediction the lower level prediction and then there's an upper level prediction as well so this is a very very useful command in predicting what might happen in the future based on time and based on data that may have seasonality uh, built into it. And that concludes the review that you need to complete this case.